Hello everyone, and welcome to Designing Characters, where I explain turning characters from my mind and other media into characters for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Here, we focus on builds and personality traits, utilizing standard array or point by with D&D Beyond's layout. Today, we're working on a special patron request, You May Ren, from Fate Grand Order. This was an interesting dive into research for the lesser-known Nasuverse. I've watched uh, Fate Zero and a little bit of Fate Stay Night. I wasn't impressed with the latter too much, just my own opinion. I greatly enjoyed Fate Zero because I'm an edgy boy. So I didn't really know much about you, so this was interesting. You is an ancient not-vampire, but a vampire that drinks mana and sometimes blood. She also hates humanity, so this should be fun to design. <laughs> So, what do we need for the social dits of a character with tremendous raw magical power and practically no physical, social, or tactical ability? First, you is technically immortal, but unless you get a few epic boons from your DM, that's not going to happen. So we'll do what we can instead to make her very hard to kill. Second, though it's not her strongest ability, she is technically an assassin class by fate standards. As such, she's going to need to be able to suppress her presence entirely. And finally, Yu likes throwing around her blood and pure mana to devastate the landscape with raw power and curses. So we need a lot of big, simple spells. For ability scores, we'll start with a 15 in Constitution. You're really good at not dying, and incredibly durable despite your petite stature. Your 14 will go into your charisma, representing your powerful personality and even stronger raw magical power. With a 13 in wisdom and 12 in intelligence, you have a solid willpower, insight to detect dangerous situations and people, as well as an understanding of history and some knowledge-based skills. Your 10 in dexterity and 8 in strength show off your paltry physical attributes, you're decently coordinated, but a physical fighter you are most assuredly not. For race, you're a magical vampire, capable of growing stronger through drinking blood, being very difficult to kill, and having an unnatural ability associated with the supernatural. As such, we'll be going with the Unearthed Arcana's... Dampier? Daphnipier? Damp Dampier? It's a not-vampire. I don't know how to pronounce this. There's like six different pronunciations on Google, sue me. This race will grant you a plus two charisma and a plus one constitution. Alongside this, you have the undead and humanoid monster types and an additional language. Take Primordial, representing your understanding of the ancient elementals and languages of the world. Dampierre also gained dark vision up to 60 feet with the unique racial trait of Spider Climb and Vampiric Bite. Spider Climb allows you to have a climbing speed equal to your movement speed and grants the ability to walk up vertical surfaces while keeping your hands free. Vampiric Bite is your last resort when you're in desperate need of nourishment to recover your strength. Considered a natural weapon attack, you can perform as many times as your proficiency bonus, recovered on a long rest. This bite deals 1d4 damage, treating constitution as your modifier for both attack and damage. When you're below half HP, you gain advantage on this bite. Should this hit, assuming the target isn't construct or undead in monster type, you may either heal yourself for the damage dealt, or empower yourself, granting you a bonus to your next ability check or attack roll to the damage dealt instead. Note that this just says attack roll, so it could be melee, which you're terrible at, and make it okay, or you can use it with a spell attack. Not much is known about Yu's past, partially due to her being absolutely ancient in the Nasuverse, but for the sake of this uh, storyline and situation and the way D&D works, yada yada yada, and the limited information that we do have in regards to her being the wife of a potential emperor that has long since died, we're going to roll with a variant noble background thing. Using this, take proficiency in history and perception, as well as alchemical supplies and the herbalism kit to represent your knowledge of plants, chemistry, and the past, largely due to living through so much of it. You also gain the feature, Position of Privilege, allowing you a variety of effects to socialize with other nobility and naturally attain the favor of most commoners, depending on how you and your DM want to spin this. Born as a simple but beautiful village woman, she was raised within Karatur. 
her life would be relatively normal, learning the arts, literature, and chores as most women attempting to become wives of soldiers within the lands did during this time period. As time progressed, she found her husband to be, but it wasn't some mere soldier. Instead, she caught the eye of a powerful man whom was vying for the position of emperor. After their meeting, their love began to blossom, forming into a deep trust as he took her as a wife, expecting her to fall back to his comfortable home, and instead finding she refused to ever leave his side, even when it came to battle. Though she did not partake in the bloodshed personally, she followed through the swaths of death and blood without hesitation. For him, eventually, constant battles and political sway would get the best of him. He would fall in battle to a powerful enemy which tore his corpse to bits. Inhuman. Impossible. In despair, she stayed by his corpse, and from it found the black blood decorating his blade taking a vial of it and fleeing into history. Unknown to the world, she studied the blood in hiding. As a consort to a now-dead man that had once vied for the seat of emperor, it was far too dangerous for her to show her face. But she desired to one day meet him again. Using the blood and her knowledge of alchemy, she transformed herself following the beliefs of her people that one day her love would return. Immortality had become her own but with it came an innate connection to magic the likes of which she had never known. Untrained raw power, channeled through her now-cursed blood, and with it came her magic. Now, for class, as is evident by that background, we're going with Sorcerer. You didn't study her magic, she just uses it through latent power and cursed blood. Sorcerers gain 1d6 hit die, as well as proficiency in daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows. None of which matter to you, because you can't use any of them with the twigs that you call arms. This also grants you proficiency in constitution and charisma saving throws, along with intimidation and insight skills. Next is your sorcerer's origin. Your powers came from an ancient, powerful, pureblood vampire, so we're going with an evil divine soul sorcerer. This grants you a variety of spells, usually bound to the faith-based classes, and lets you choose a divine magic type. We'll go with Evil, granting you the Inflict Wound spell for free. This is your first close-range blast of pure cursed blood and power. It's also one of the best spells in the game at early levels, just saying. Along with this, you gain Favored by the Gods, fitting considerably, considering the original you is basically a reincarnated elemental spirit that is comparable to being a god. Once per short or long rest, any time you fail a saving throw or miss an attack roll, you can roll 2d4 and add the roll to your original total, possibly changing the outcome. You also gain spellcasting. Keep in mind sorcerers cannot prepare different spells each day, so what we pick here is what you get. Feel free to change these up, but these are what I felt fit the most for her concept. For your cantrips, take Guidance to add 1d4 to any skill check you're about to perform within a minute, along with Prestidigitation and Thaumaturgy to provide you with basically every utility, fun roleplay effect in the game, instantly cleaning a surface, amplifying light and sound, changing colors, small illusions, making your eyes glow, and all sorts of other fun traits. Finally, take Toll the Dead, representing the pure, cursed, raw power you're able to unleash on a target at will. You also gain two first-level spells. Take Mage Armor and Cure Wounds, representing your ability to manipulate your magic to heal yourself, others, and Dawn Invisible Armor of pure mana to protect your body. You need it with your terrible dexterity. Second-level Sorcerers gain Fonts of Magic, granting you access to Sorcery Points. For now, it's basically just a way to let you turn your points into extra spell slots when you run out of them. But along with this, you get an extra first level spell. Take Guiding Bolt as a condensed beam of pure destructive force unleashed from your mana. Third level sorcerers gain meta magic, allowing you to burn your sorcery points for additional effects you can apply to your magic. Take Empower Spell to re-roll damage for a spell in exchange for a sorcery point. As well, take Seeking Spell. This allows you to re-roll the attack roll of a spell that after it misses for two sorcery points. Guaranteeing your blast of magic will hit the target, and hit them hard. You also gain your first second level spell. Take Scorching Ray to represent beams of compressed, blood-colored heat to sear through your targets. Combine those with Guiding Bolts or your other bonuses to make the spell devastating. Fourth level sorcerers gain an ability score improvement. 
take a plus two to your charisma for a total of 18 to help enhance the raw firepower you're capable of dishing out. For your spell this level, take shield to help ease that horrendous AC of yours. Represented as a glowing shield of mana that flares up to help deflect incoming damage more efficiently. 5th level sorcerers gain an additional cantrip and a 3rd level spell. Take counterspell, representing her ability to shut down and absorb the mana of others, alongside shocking grasp to provide you with some escape opportunity and melee options. Channel pure energy directly into the body of someone getting a little bit too close for comfort. You do have a disturbing number of stalkers throughout the series. And in your fan base. Sixth level Divine Soul Sorcerers gain the Empowered Healing feature. Once per turn, you may spend a sorcery point to allow yourself or any ally within five feet of you to re-roll any dice used for a healing spell, pushing that immense resilience and recovery ability all the further. You also gain another third level spell. Take Fireball to represent an explosion of raw concentrated heat and force fired into the fray. You don't really know how to work with friends anyway. 7th level sorcerers gain a 4th level spell. Take Death Ward, representing the sheer, unstoppable, unkillable energy that you have going on, so even if you do die, you don't. 8th level sorcerers gain another ability score improvement. Take another plus 2 to Charisma for a total of 20. Along with this, take the Greater Invisibility spell, representing your uncanny ability to disappear and conceal your presence, despite your near-non-existent stealth training. Ninth level sorcerers gain their first 5th level spell. Take Synaptic Static, representing a powerful explosion of pure mana assaulting the minds of all within a targeted area with pure pressure for a tremendous damage boost with the rare Psychic Damage type. Tenth level sorcerers gain an additional metamagic option. Take Quicken Spell to spend two sorcery points and cast a spell as a bonus action instead of an action. Combine this with your Vampiric Bite to devastating effect in order to buff your spells and attack rolls. You also gain another cantrip and spell. Take Spare the Dying to help ensure those around you don't die as easily, if you care enough to spare your blood for them. For your spell, take Spiritual Weapon to represent the few times you manifest a sword of pure force and swing it alongside your own spells and attacks. For those few art pieces that have you wielding weapons despite your physical stats being garbage. 11th level sorcerers gain access to 6th level spells. Take Heal, representing your ability to simply get back up even after you should have been near death moments before. 12th level sorcerers gain a feat. Take Warcaster to maximize your concentration spells and use your vast arsenal of attack spells for opportunity attacks. 13th level sorcerers gain 7th level spells. Take Regeneration, amplifying that ability even further and also gaining the ability to regrow entire lost parts of your body now. Or others if you feel inclined. 14th level sorcerers gain your otherworldly wings. Not really in character, but you know. There's always going to be some mix and match here. This allows you to summon giant spectral bat wings of pure energy with a bonus action, thus allowing you to have a flying speed of 30 feet. The wings last until you are incapacitated or you dismiss them, making them phenomenal for mobility. Which is good, because you don't really have any of that. 15th level sorcerers gain an 8th level spell. Take anti-magic field, allowing you to completely nullify the mana and power of other spellcasters with your own overwhelming mystical force. You're the equal to a true ancestor. A god among vampires. Don't let simple human mages outpace your spellcraft. 16th level sorcerers gain a feat. Take Tough, representing your overwhelming raw life force and durability, especially for a spellcaster. 17th level sorcerers gain an additional metamagic. Take Heightened Spell to spend 3 sorcery points and force disadvantage on the saving throws used against your own spells. You also gain your first 9th level spell. Take Wish, representing your immense mystical power to bend reality itself to your will through nothing but your pure mana. 18th level Divine Soul Sorcerers gain the Unearthly Recovery feature. Once per long rest, you are able to spend your bonus action to recover HP equal to half your hit point maximum. This is instant. Combine this with your spells and bite, and you are officially nearly unkillable. 19th level Sorcerers gain an additional ability score improvement. Take Constitution to help further the effect of your Bite, and grant you more total health, for a total of 18 Constitution. Finally, at our 20th level Capstone, Sorcerers gain the Sorcerer's Restoration feature. This causes you to regenerate 4 Sorcery Points every short rest. Now, with all this said and done, how good is this build? For Strengths, you seriously just don't die, ever? 
with fixed hit points as a sorcerer. One of the classes with the lowest hit die in the whole game. You have over 200 hit points. That's absolutely amazing. Between Death Ward, Cure Wounds, Heal, Regenerate, and your class feature, you could theoretically eat over 200 points of damage in one round and just get back up. That's normal with Death Ward, except without a spell slot being expended, you then also can regenerate 101 hit points instantly. This extends to healing allies, though that may not be in character. But not healing them with your Heal, Regenerate, or Cure Wound spells would kind of be a waste with how amazing you are at it. As well, your actual damage potential is equally disgusting. You have a wide and varied set of damage types to pick from. Your spells with attack rolls are particularly nasty, as between your bonus 2d4 from Favorite of the Gods, bonus to spell attack rolls with your bind attack, and sorcery points for reroll potential and using spells as bonus actions, you can nearly guarantee they'll hit. And when they do hit, they'll hurt. A lot. All while you laugh off most damage that you take. Now, for weaknesses, your AC is significantly lacking. With a base of 10, 13 with mage armor, 18 with shield, you'll be okay at low levels. But once you break past tier 2, you're going to be in some serious trouble. As well, common effects that target your dexterity or wisdom saving throws are a real problem for you. Thankfully, you have decent hit points and recovery to compensate, but that burns spell slots, limited class features, and sorcery points you can't really spare after two or three encounters. Your saving throws are equally abysmal for most common saves, like dexterity and wisdom, which are pretty much everywhere. For this reason, saving your 2d4 bonus for the occasional saving throw roll would probably be a wise choice but at least poisons, toxins, and banishment-based effects won't have much use against you, considering your staggering con and charisma saving throws. Finally, your skills are pretty subpar. With horrible physical skills, lacking social skills, especially for a level 20 charisma-based character, aside from intimidation, you just don't really have much going for you. You have practically non-existent knowledge and survival skills, Normal for a caster, but usually casters will take a few utility spells to allow magic and creativity to help compensate for those lacking skills. We didn't take those. We basically only took combat spells except for a couple cantrips. But that's why you need to start playing nice with others. You may have lived alone for hundreds of years after your loss, but at some point everyone has to come out of their cave. Find a party, work with them, learn how to rely on other people again, and provide the firepower and tank at the same time. Let the other masters and servants do the rest of the work. Stick to what you're good at. And maybe you'll find love. Or your lover, again. As always, thanks for watching everyone. If you like the video, please subscribe for more. I do videos on all kinds of Dungeons & Dragons, storytelling, let's plays, and various nerd things once or twice a week. If you're interested in my own world, I'd encourage you to check out my Patreon and World Anvil, where I have several D&D supplements based around my world and an entire adventure based on it as a work in progress. You can also talk with my community in Discord to learn about a literate roleplay board for my world that I run as well. I'd like to thank my Platinum patrons, Crom and SPS. Your donations mean the world to me. If you'd like to become a patron to help fund my books, D&D supplements, roleplay board, or channel, please drop by the link to my Patreon in the description below. I'm starting to work on a lot of my homebrew for D&D and putting it in on there as well. There's some free stuff on World Anvil, and there's some that's extra rewards on my Patreon for my patrons, if that interests anyone. Let me know what character build or video you'd like to see next in the comments below. I read them all and reply to as many as I can. As always, I love your input on the things I make. Have an amazing day, everyone. Be safe. Love each other. Goodbye.